Do you feel bad for buttons? I mean, think about it. Buttons have been getting clicked over and over and over again millions of times and they can't do anything about it, but today that's going to stop. I'm going to show you exactly how to create a button that is going to fight against getting clicked. So let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And to get started, on the right hand side, I have the button that we cannot touch. And you can see as I get close to it with my mouse, it's going to run away in the opposite direction of my mouse no matter what I do. It's even going to jump across the other side of the page if it needs to. And there is absolutely no way that I can touch this button. It is absolutely impossible. So what we're going to do is actually build this. So to get started, we need to create an index.html file, which is going to be where we put all of our code for our HTML. If we hit exclamation point enter, it'll generate this boilerplate code for us. And we can get started inside the body because it's going to be very simple. We're just going to create a button. We're going to call it an ID of evil button because it's going to be running away. And we'll just say can't touch this inside of it. Or we'll say can't touch me. Don't want to get copyright struck for can't touch this. And then also inside of the head, we're going to put in just some basic styles. So we're going to have a style tag. And the first thing we want to style is our body. We want to set the margin to zero on the sides. We want to make sure that it has a width of 100 view width. And we also want to make sure that we have here a height of 100 view height. And then lastly, overflow of hidden. What this is going to do is it's going to allow our button to move anywhere inside of the page, as you can see over here, and it's going to be able to jump to the other side like we want it to. This just allows it to take up the entire space. Next, we're going to have our evil button. Make sure we put the pound symbol in front so we know it's an ID selector. And we're going to make this a position of absolute since we want to be able to move it absolutely. We want to make it so that the white space in it never wraps. So we'll just say no wrap. This means the word will never wrap when it gets to the edge of the page. And then lastly, we're just going to increase the font size just a little bit so it'll be easier for you to read. We'll change it to 2rem, so essentially twice the size. Now if we open that up using Live Server, you can see that if I drag this over, we have a button that says can't touch me, but obviously right now you can touch it. And one other thing about this button is if we do actually touch it, which I can simulate by hitting tab and then enter, it's going to say nice try and actually close out the window for us. So that's even another fail safe that if somehow you click the button, it'll just close the window for you and laugh at your face. Now that's all the HTML we need. So the last thing we want to do is add in our script tag. We'll make sure we set it to be defer. And the source is just going to be script.js. And we'll create that file now. So we can just say script.js, just like that. Make sure we save our index file. And now we can work on the JavaScript. And of course, the first thing we need to do is select that evil button. And we're just going to use document.get element by ID. And we're going to pass it that ID of evil button. So now we have access to our button. And we can come in here and we can actually set up our event listeners. So we can say evil button dot add event listener. And we want to do the first event listener, which is going to be on click. So whenever we click on this, what we want to do is obviously close out the thing. So we'll say alert. We'll say nice. Whoops, nice, try, and then window.close, and that'll close out the window for us. And we can test this. We click the button, nice try, and it's going to close the window. Obviously, we want to have this open, so let's open this up with a live server, drag this back over, and now we just won't worry about clicking it anymore since we already know it works. The next thing we want to do is actually set up our mouse move event listener. So we'll say document add event listener, and every time that we move the mouse, we want to call this event. And this event is going to be what we do to move the button if we get too close to it with our mouse. Inside of here, what we can do is we can get the X and Y position of our mouse by saying e.pageX, and we can get Y, which is equal to a.pageY, just like this. And then just so we can see this working, we can console.log X and Y. And now if we inspect our page, go over to the console, you can see that as we move our mouse up and down, the Y is going to be changing and left and right, the X is going to be changing. So now we actually know where our mouse is, we just need to figure out where it is in relation to the button that we have, which means that we need to get the position of the button. And this is actually fairly straightforward to do. We can get the bounding box of this button by just creating a variable, we'll call it button box, and it's going to be evil button dot get bounding client rectangle. And this is going to give us the X and the Y position of the button, as well as the height and width, 
so we know exactly where this button is on the page. So for example, what we can do inside of our console.log is we can say button box, and we wanted to get, for example, the x, and we can say button box dot y. This is going to give us the x and y position, and if we inspect, you can see it's at 0, 0, which is where the top left corner is inside of our button. Now the next thing we need to do is to actually get the position of the mouse from the center of our button. So we're going to create a function to do that. We're just going to call it distance from center. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the position of our box, which in our case is our button position. This is going to be either the X or the Y of our button. We're going to pass in our mouse position, and we're also going to pass in the size of our box, which in our case is going to be this button right here. And all we want to do is we want to take our box position and subtract it from our mouse position, but we also want to add in half of our box size. So we'll say box size divided by two, because what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the width of the box here, the X of our box, and the X of our mouse. And the reason we're adding half the box size is because we want to get to the center of the box instead of the edge of it. And we can actually just call that and say distance whoops, distance from center, we can come in here, we can pass in our button box dot x, our page x, as well as our button box dot width. And let's just log this out. So we'll say console dot log of this, and we can see what this looks like. If we inspect the page, we can see that as we get closer to the center of our button, it becomes zero. And as we pass over to this side, it's negative. And if we pass over to this side, you see it's positive because we're positive away from it. And right here, we're negative, we're past it, which is why it's negative. Now we can do the exact same thing, but for our Y position. So let's first set this to a variable. We're going to call this our horizontal, whoops, horizontal distance from, and we'll just set that equal to this function. And then we'll just copy this and do the exact same thing. But this time we're going to do the vertical distance from. And instead of passing in the X's, we want to pass in the Y. And we also want to make sure we pass in the height of our box, just like this. And now we have the distance from the center horizontally and the distance from the center vertically. So we will know how close our mouse is to the actual button, which is great. Now the next thing we want to do is actually check for our offset. And to do this, we can create a variable called horizontal offset. And we're just going to set that equal to our button, whoops, button box dot height. I'm sorry, width because we're doing vertical divided by two, and we're gonna add in this offset variable. This is essentially how far away from the center of our button do we wanna start moving our button away from the cursor. So we can just create this variable all the way at the top here. Whoops, we're just gonna call it offset, and it's just going to be 100. It's just a global variable for us. So essentially what we're saying is whenever our mouse gets within 100 pixels of our button, we want to start moving our button. We can do the same thing for vertical because we wanna do this both for vertical and for horizontal, so we'll change this to height, and we'll keep the same 100 pixel offset. Now is where the actual confusing part of the code is going to come in, which is the math to determine where our button needs to be. So the first thing we want to do is we want to check if we are actually close enough to our button. So we'll say if the absolute value of our horizontal distance from, because this could be positive or negative, we're not really sure. So we want to just turn it into a positive number. And we want to check if that positive number is less than or equal to our horizontal offset. So what this is saying is that the distance from our cursor to our button is less than the offset we specified, essentially the width plus 100 pixels. And we want to do the exact same thing and check for if the Y position is close. So we want to say, and the math.absolute of our vertical distance from is going to be less than or equal to our vertical offset. So if we're both close in the X axis and in the Y axis, then we actually want to change the button's position. And we're going to do this with a function, which we'll just call set button position. But all we need to do is pass in an X and a Y position of where we want our button to move to. And we want to actually move our button based on how close our cursor is. So the closer our cursor is to our button, the further we want to move it away. And that's actually going to be fairly straightforward to do. The first thing we need to do is actually get the X position of our current button, and then we want to add to that X position. And we're just going to take the horizontal offset, and we want to divide it by our horizontal distance from. Like as this bottom number gets smaller, the overall division is going to get larger. So as we get closer, the offset is going to increase. And then in order to make this a large offset, we're just going to multiply by 10, so that the effects of this are essentially tenfold. And we're going to do the exact same thing but we're going to do it for vertical. So let's just copy this down, change this to vertical offset. 
and of course, vertical distance from. Now let's create that function, which is going to be called set button position, and it's going to take in an x and a y. And for now, let's just console.log that x and y to see exactly what we're getting. So if we inspect the page here, you can see that nothing's happening when our cursor is far away, but as we get close enough, you can see we start to get numbers. The first number is the x distance, and as you can see, we're really close to the center of our button, so you can see we have a quite large number, 192. But our distance from the center of the button vertically is small, so we have a fairly small number of about 21 or so. And as we get closer, you can see the numbers are going to be increasing. As you can see, when we get really close, it's becoming really large, 270 for example. So as our mouse gets closer, the button is going to move even further away. So it'll become impossible to catch since it'll get faster the closer you get to it. And this times 10 here is just making it so that the distance our button moves is larger because otherwise it would only move a few pixels and we want it to move a lot of pixels at once. So now let's actually set the position of our button. We can do that fairly easily by saying evil button dot style dot top and we want to set that equal to x. And I'm actually going to change this variable to be top. I'm sorry, left here and top here. So we can set our top to our y and we want to set here our left, which is going to be equal to our left. And we need to make sure we convert this to pixels. So we can just come in here with string interpolation and say that we want to have left with pixels after it, just like that. So now this is going to be for our CSS, it's actually going to have our value, which we're passing in here, and it's going to be converting it to pixels for the actual position of the button. So now if we save that as we get close to our button, you can see that it's starting to move away. But the problem is, is that our button is actually jumping off the edge of the page. As you can see, our button is no longer here. So we need to actually check to see if our button overlaps the edge of our page, and if so, make it jump to the other side of the page, as you saw with the previous example. So in order to do that, we need to do some more fun math, and we need to do that math by getting the size of the window. So we can get the window box, which is going to be equal to document.body.get bounding client rectangle, and we want to also do the exact same thing, but with our button box. So we'll just copy this down. So now we have our button and our window. So we can actually check if our button is overlapping the edge of our window. So first we're going to come in here, we'll do a check. And to do this, we're going to use that same distance from center. We essentially want to see if the distance from the center of the button is over the edge of the page. So if the center of our button overlaps the edge of the page and we can come in here and we can pass in our left variable. So this is the left position of our button. We also want to pass in our window box, whoops, window box dot left. So this is going to be the left side of our screen. And we want to pass in lastly, our button box dot width. And all we want to do is check if that's less than zero. What that's going to mean is it's going to mean the center of our button has passed the left corner of our screen. And if we do that, we want to move our button over to the right hand side. So we can just come in here and set our left equal to the window box dot right. Whoops right minus our button box dot width. So what this is saying is we're setting the left side of our button to the very, very right side. So our button on the very left is going to be right off the edge of the screen. Then we're going to subtract the width of the button. So now the right side of the button is up against the edge of the screen. And then the last thing we're going to do is just subtract our offset. So our button will now be 100 pixels into the edge of the screen. And we can actually test this by trying to move the button off the edge of the screen. But you'll notice the button is not quite working as expected. It's kind of moving around jankily. And that's because up here we have our button box dot X and this should be our Y position. So now if we save this, our button should move a little bit more predictably and we can actually move it hopefully off the left side of our screen. And you'll see that it's going to move over to the right side. And there you go. You can see as soon as the halfway point crossed the left side of the screen, it moved over to the right side. Obviously the right side is not going to do that. So we can work on the right side of our screen next. And what we want to do is we want to check of our left position and our window box dot right. We want to check to see if that is greater than zero. Essentially, if the center of our button is past the right side of our screen. If that's the case, we want to set our left to our window box dot left. We don't have to worry about subtracting by the width because the left side of our box is already going to be on the left side of the screen, but we do want to add in our offset. Now with that done, we can move our box off the left. You see that still works. And if we move it off to the right, you can see it shows up on the left hand side. Now all that's left to do is to do the exact same thing, but for the top of our button. So let's copy this down one more time. And here we want to do the top side of our button. And we want to check if it's going off the top side of the screen. And of course, here we want to check the height instead of the width. 
we want to check if that's less than zero. So essentially it's gone off the top of our page all the way up here is what we want to check. And if that's true, we want to set the top equal to our window box dot bottom. Essentially we want to move it to the bottom. We want to subtract out our height. So we're going to say button box dot height. And lastly, we want to come in here and subtract our offset. Essentially the exact same thing we did up here for our left hand side. Now if we save that and we move our button off the top of the page, you can see it shows up on the bottom of the page. And the last thing left to do is to make it work if it goes off the bottom. So we can do the exact same thing, but instead here we'll have bottom, and instead of less than, we're going to have greater than, and here we're just going to set it to the top, and we want to add in our offset, just like this. Now if we save that, it goes off the top of the page, it works, and if we make it go off the bottom of the page, you see it shows back up on the top of the page. And now there is absolutely no way we can touch this button, no matter how much we try. And that is all it takes to make an impossible to click button. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos over here, and subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good day.